So welcome to another screencast. We'll continue our respiratory uh, anatomy or functional anatomy here, and we'll look at some of the structures of the uh, lower respiratory tract. So uh, specifically, you should be able to identify, describe, and explain the structure and function of uh, the larynx and the trachea, uh, and a little bit here about the bronchi and, and bronchioles. Uh, being able to then explain how the structure of each of those is related to their function. So really starting to think about the structure uh, and function relationship. And then finally, how the larynx uh, produces vocalizations. So let's get started here. The uh, anterior view and then a uh, lateral view here, as well as a uh, posterior view of the larynx from there. So the larynx is uh, sometimes known as the voice box right? or the Adam's apple. There's not two D's in that. So Adam's and the Adam's apple. And uh, you can palpate this. And what you're, what you're palpating, what you're feeling, is this thyroid cartilage right here. Right? And so the thyroid cartilage is uh, more prominent in males than in females, uh, testosterone has a positive effect on the hyaline cartilage that makes up that, that thyroid cartilage there. So this thyroid cartilage is the uh, anterior portion of that. There's this uh, little membrane here that connects that uh, thyroid cartilage to the uh, hyoid bone. The interesting thing about the hyoid bone is the only bone in the body that does not articulate or join uh, directly with any other bone in the body. Right? If you uh, palpate up in this area and you push backwards, it's going to hurt a little bit, but you can uh, push back and up, uh, you can actually palpate that uh, hyoid bone there. Um, it's also a good idea to go look at a skeleton and sort of see where that is uh, in, in real life. All right? So this thyroid cartilage here uh, anteriorly is protecting that, the voice box. The other piece of cartilage here is this uh, cricoid cartilage. And that cricoid part cartilage is a circular piece of cartilage. It goes all the way around. This thyroid cartilage uh, is more of a shield. And so you can sort of get that impression here on the, on the posterior view, right, where it's not going to come all the way around uh, the, the, the posterior side there. Right. So another prominent structure is this epiglottis that you'll see. And again, remember that the epiglottis covers the uh, airway when you swallow a food bolus. Right, and that is also a uh, cartilaginous piece there. So this uh, epiglottis, the thyroid cartilage, the cricoid cartilage, that circular piece of cartilage, and then uh, this is sort of the dividing line uh, between the larynx and the trachea. And so you have these tracheal cartilage rings here. And you see posteriorly that those trachea rings do not go all the way around, so they are more U-shaped, pardon me, or C-shaped. So posteriorly, what would be sitting right here would be the esophagus. Right? And so when you swallow a food uh, bolus, this, uh, c these C-shaped rings of cartilage will expand a little bit so that that food bolus can go right down. Okay. So if you look in uh, sagittal, a sagittal section here, right, you'd see that this is the airway. Here's this cricoid cartilage piece that's going to go all the way around. And then the uh, tracheal rings here, the tracheal cartilage um, is only C-shaped or U-shaped. And again, is not continuous with the other piece on the, on the back side there. The uh, voice box of the larynx here, if you look at it from a superior view, if you're looking, if you, you ask the patient to open his or her mouth and you look down, and here's a uh, view through a laryngoscope, right? so a scope uh, able to see the larynx here, right? you're able to see then the, the opening, uh, opening airway here. Now, all these cartilages here, I'm not really super concerned uh, with, you, with you knowing, but I do want to point out a couple of things here, that these vocal folds, these are the true... Uh, vocal cords. These are pieces of uh, uh, tough connective tissue, right? regular connective tissue. You have these vestibular folds, which are the false vocal cords, right? and that's a little bit softer uh, connective tissue. And then here's the, the epiglottis. And so again, this is the anterior view. This, this is a little uh, um, confusing at times. Right? So we have a uh, the anterior is that way. This is a superior view looking down, right? so air would be going uh, through here. Right? If air was coming the other way, coming up out at you, <coughs> pardon me, um, the vocal cords would be, would be vibrating. Right? And we'll watch this animation here uh, in class, and it's uh, one of the cooler animations that we show all year. Okay? So um, 
Again, here the image is at the bottom here. The thyroid cartilage, again, is the shield-shaped cartilage on the front. In fact, thyroid means shield. Um, here's your cricoid cartilage that's supporting this. This ring goes all the way around, right? And then the vocal cords are suspended between that thyroid cartilage and that cricoid cartilage there. So vocal, vocal folds positioned for breathing, they're open there. Right? When you are speaking, uh, there are muscles that will contract this and pull these uh, taut. Right? And the changing of the tension in the vocal cords here produces the different sounds, the different pitches. Right? And we'll watch that on that animation again. Okay. Moving down past the larynx, uh, air is going to go then into the trachea. And here we, saw the, here we see the trachea again. Anteriorly, you're going to uh, see these rings of cartilage, and again, these are uh, C-shaped rings. Those rings continue uh, all the way down the, the length of the trachea and into the bronchi. So the, the purpose of these uh, rings here is to hold open right, or keep it patent. Right? So the uh, Imagine if you were drinking a uh, milkshake through a straw, right, and it's a real thick milkshake. When you suck on that, on the straw, the straw kind of collapses in on itself, right? This is what would happen if uh, the, the trachea did not have those rings of cartilage to hold it open, right, is that the pressures in there would just collapse that entire trachea, so the, uh, the, the cartilage rings there hold that open. As the air moves down the trachea, there's this first major branch here at the uh, carina or carina, and the branches then become the two main bronchi. Right? So you have a uh, right bronchus and a left bronchus, and you notice that those C-shaped rings continue there. And the bronchi, the two main bronchi, then will <coughs> uh, branch into secondary bronchi, right? and then tertiary bronchi, right? the segmental bronchus. And so you just have this continuously breaking down here right, of the, of the, the, the airways, the, the windpipes. So these air passageways uh, decrease in size but increase in number as you move down. Right? And so this is going to increase uh, ultimately the surface area for uh, gas exchange. So the main bronchi, secondary bronchi, tertiary bronchi, right? and then ultimately you're going to get down to this bronchiole region right here. All these bronchi have uh, the cartilage rings and the bronchioles do not, so they stop there at that uh, more microscopic, microscopic level. Okay? So um, <clears throat> essentially that is what a lung is, is a, is a collection of these bronchioles and then uh, the alveoli as we get further down. So let's go look at that. Actually before, before we look at that, uh, here again is the trachea. And you see the relationship here uh, between the esophagus and the trachea. And so this esophagus is posterior to the, to the trachea. Here's, again, your C or U-shaped uh, rings of cartilage. The uh, <coughs> esophagus, as the food bolus moves down here as you swallow, is going to expand. And so uh, that allows, th this C-shaped here allows that food bolus to kind of uh, push that airway out of the way a little bit and get moved down. And as well as those C-shaped rings of cartilage holding open the, the airway or keeping it pat patent. So this is an elect uh, electron micro. This is a uh, light micrograph of the, of the trachea here. Here you see the muscular tube, the esophagus. Right? Here is the uh, uh, hyaline cartilage of the, of the trachea, again, uh, U-shaped. And then this is the lumen, so this would be air. And so since this is air and this is open to the outside world, you're going to have a mucous membrane here, uh, which again is going to be a pseudostratified ciliated columnar uh, epithelium. Okay. And we have microscope slides in class of this. I encourage you to, to take a look at that cross section uh, through the tracheas and identify those different features there. Right. And again, this is an image uh, from your from your textbook, seeing the, the same the same thing there. Right. Um, looking at the uh, the pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. On the left here, you have a cartoon, and on the right is a section of that uh, uh, magnified. And you'll notice that the, uh, here you have this lamin appropriate, or that basement membrane. Right? And then the ciliated columnar epithelial cells are here. You see the cilia here. And then interspersed, there are going to be these goblet cells that are secreting the mucus. So these goblet cells secrete the mucus. 
and that mucus <clears throat> and these cilia combine here to uh, trap any sort of foreign particles that might have gotten into there. So we're talking like dust, right? bacteria, etc., cetera, right? things that got down in the airway. Well, the mucus traps those, those foreign particles, and then the cilia beating uh, create this uh, wave of um, uh, movement so that all those dust particles and things move in this mucus. They get pushed up to the level of the laryngopharynx, and then that mucus is then swallowed and goes down into, the, into the, your digestive tract and is taken care of that way so that you don't have dust and things getting down into the, in, going down this way and getting into the deep parts of the lungs where the gas exchange is going to take place and irritating that and preventing any sort of, uh, any sort of irritation of the, the alveoli there. Okay. So uh, <coughs> the structure and function of the larynx, the trachea, and the bronchi, and a little bit about bronchioles here. You should be able to identify, describe those, those structures and the functions. Uh, be able to talk about how the structure of each of those, uh, how those structures relate to, to the functions, right? And then a little bit about how the larynx uh, produces those vocalizations, right? Thanks for listening.